I don't think I love you no more. You never seem to call me lately. But I don't think hey guys, my name is Curly Ups, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do some basic sync in Adobe After Effects. Uh, so I've got CC 2014, but it doesn't really matter. So um, you're going to want a song, obviously, um, to sync to, and then you just want your video or inch. So I've just got an image um, to sync to. So what you're going to want to do is go to your audio and find where the drop is, wherever that is. I've got the Eden Project XO. So that's a pretty cool song to sync to for basics. I'm going to do another tutorial to show how you can do some advanced sync. And here you go. This is what the drop usually looks like. It's quite small. Then it goes quite big. Um, so I'm going to go to about here. See what that looks like. I don't think I love you no more. You never seem to call me lately. But I don't think she So then you're going to want a, a fade in. So you're going to keyframe it a bit a bit in, I can't really do this, and then just go to minus 48 at the start and then do exactly the same, got a keyframe with 0 dB, I forgot what it's called, something bells, anyway, so now it's got faded in, right? So it's, so it's now faded in and it's faded out, and if you just skip to the end, so it's faded out. Okay, now for the sync. So you want to go on to right click, new, adjustment layer. Put that below. It doesn't really matter. You can't have it above, but I like to have it below. The make sure it's above though the video or the PNG sequence of your intro. So I've just got a picture. Um, so now you're gonna want to. What well, this is how I sync. So instead of like seeing where the beat is and then like keyframing it all, I do it this way. So. Every time there's a beat, you can you can do it differently. Depending, like you could do it to the drum beat or to the voice. So there's loads of different things to do. P piano, if there's one. So I'm just gonna show you guys. I'm gonna try and do this really loudly. Try and break my keyboard, which is new. Hopefully you guys could hear that. I might put like something in the background. So now you have markers every time to beat they're a bit behind but we can sort that out later so now you're gonna get transform and drag that on and then you're gonna go to the marker go zoom in a bit and you're gonna go two keyframes before do that by pre pressing page up clicking the scale keyframe and then two frames which is the marker and then it depends really if I usually do 115 for text intros, but for this, oh no, that's 125, 115. But for this, I'm gonna do 120. And then what we're gonna do is gonna copy that, and then next keyframe, gonna go two keyframes before, and then paste it. So now you've got that. And I'm gonna do this for every single keyframe that you have done. So like this. I'm not going to cut this bit out because it might be useful. I don't know. This is quite a simple beat, by the way. I'll do a more complex beat later. Uh, maybe in a few weeks. Or in this week, maybe? This week? I don't know. Maybe next week. I might do weekly tutorials. That might be cool. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, instead of just going like that. And they're not going anywhere for the last bit. You want to put that back to a hundred at the end, so it goes like that as well. And now we can preview it. It probably won't be in time with the sync, but we can move them around. So you can usually see where the first beat is. It's about here. So we're just going to move them to about here. Let's see if that works. A little bit off, a bit forward. Okay, that's good. It looks quite bad because there's no S shake, but so if you don't have S shake, uh, sorry, but that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> I'm gonna do a bit at the start as well, where it kind of like weirds, but that will be with S shake. So if you don't have S shake, I'm sorry, 
but you're just gonna have to have this for your sync so but if you have s shake or twitch i guess because twitch i got twitch but i don't really like twitch it's weird i can't really use it i just use s shake and um, transform but if you do a twitch and you don't have a shake go and use it because it's pretty cool so now you're gonna make a new adjustment layer and put that below the transform so that's got transform on it so you're gonna want to make sure you can see all the keyframes because that will help line you up with the s-shake and then just drag the s-shake onto the adjustment layer that's below it then zoom in once again so now the keyframe where it's still 100 you're gonna put the amplitude to zero and keyframe it and then next one i'm just gonna show you i'm just gonna make up some s-shake settings so i'm gonna go to uh Four, uh, tilt shake, put that to 10, put that, yeah, uh, put, make sure motion blurs on, always, and then the amplitude be 2. They're going to copy and paste that, and I copy, just copy that, and then paste it, every single one of these, and then your sync will be transformed into something really cool. Okay, and then as you did with the transform, Make sure the last keyframe is zero, just so it kind of like evens back out to normal. And then if you just quickly preview this, I might take a bit more time because it's got a few more effects on. But as you can see from this, that's pretty cool. Okay, it's almost done. Let's go. I don't think I love you no more. You never seem to call me lately. But I That's cool. I'll put that further away so it's kind of like a what kind of stay thing out there. I don't think I love you no more. You never seem to call me lately. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's the main sync. So now at the start, there's kind of this weird bit. So it's kind of like all I don't know. I it's just kind of like calm and stuff. So what I'm gonna do. Is here I'm gonna put the amplitude to about 0.5 and then put that again here here so let's see what that looks like that looks pretty cool this looks like quite so what I'm gonna do is keyframe the frequency there then just before I'm gonna put that to about two so it just makes this all smooth instead of all like wobbly make sure it's keyframe though because you'll keyframe all of those as well if you don't do that that's a bit weird because it, it like twitches a bit so what we want to do is to space them out so it's more smooth and you can't really see if you do that That looks cool, that looks cool. Let's try that. I don't think I love you no more. You never seem to call me lately. But I don't think Okay, so now especially with 3D text intros, you want kind of like a glow kind of thing with the text going on. So again with the Sapphire plugins, you're gonna have to get Sapphire plugins for this tutorial. Sorry if you don't have them. Uh there are ways of getting it for free. I'm not gonna say anything else. I'm just gonna say that. So now what you're going to do is you can actually use this for CC. I'm just going to show you this quick. 0 0.5, there'll be enough. There'll probably be, oh god, I've zoomed in. You can do like, I might just do this quick. You want like a, if you want something like that, I can. you can make it red. I'm just doing this really quick, guys. Don't mind me. There you go. Nice CC. Anyway. So once you've got your CC, or you don't need a CC, you're going to add S-Glow to the raw clip or you can have it in an adjustment layer if you want to get the smoke and stuff which will be in the background obviously if you're making a 3d text intro 
So what you want to do, every time there's a keyframe, not these keyframes, because that would look weird. Uh, what you want to get is every time there's a keyframe, you're going to want the brightness to go zero. And again, you want to mess around with this. So you want to bring it up to about whatever you really want. I'm going to put that to about one, but it depends on like your text and stuff. So that looks kind of cool. Like so, you want to do that with for every single keyframe, like so. Just copy and paste them. Don't bother doing anything else. And then, if you quickly, and then at the end, of course, make it go back to zero because otherwise it'll just like go like that, and then it won't go back down. So you want to put that to zero there. I'm actually going to put that back to the end of the keyframe or a bit further on. Just so, yeah. Okay, so now let's have a look. Okay, so it looks like it's rendered. Let's see. Okay, so this isn't going to be much of an effect tutorial or anything. But just usually the first beat, I like to add an effect. So if you just make sure everything's closed up you'll probably have a few more layers if you're making an actual intro so you want to go select all of them and by dragging and clicking and dragging and then click on one and then go pre-compose it doesn't really matter what you call it and now it should all be in one track you can go back to it by going and clicking on the thing before and you can see but sorry if you can hear my brother in the background is really loud um, so now you've just got it all in one track and you're going to add effect called optics compensation so you're going to drag that onto it open all the effects tab up and you're going to go find the first keyframe so it's there you're going to find where it pops up so there because it's two keyframes and i'm just going to set a marker there by pressing the asterisk key that's how you make markers, I probably should have said that earlier, I'll put the thing in. So now you're going to go two keyframes before. Actually, so now you're going to go quite a bit before. And you're going to tick reverse lens distortion. And click field of view. And actually, field of view, click that there. And then here, you're going to want to make it quite in. You can see it does that effect. Time to do it to about there. And then you usually people do it really fast back, but I do not like that that much actually. So it, this is how normal people do it. I'll just show you guys. That's a bit fast actually. Let me do it to about there. That looks weird. It kind of looks good with the song, but I don't usually like it. I usually make that quite far outwards, like this, as you saw in the render. Hang on. Like that, so let's preview all of it. Okay, guys, so okay, it's just about rendered, and let's see what it looks like now. Come on, render. Okay, let's see what it looks like. If it renders, okay, let's go. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's watch it one more time. Okay, so just because I've got into this, I'm going to do another effect near the back. So you normally you want to add a few more effects, but it depends on your song, really. So this one here, this sync here, it's that one there. We're going to copy, we're going to get this, uh, like so. I'm also going to get another effect called Turbulent Displace. Drag that on. And then when your optics compensation starts, you're going to put that to the amount to zero and keyframe it. And then the and then the start bit, you're going to put that to about I'll put it up about 50, I guess. 
and then you're gonna add and then you're gonna put zero but because mine's at the end I have to put that out a bit I'm actually gonna put 50 up a bit because it looks a bit plain we can put it to 100 yeah let's see what that looks like okay guys let's see what it's like okay Okay, so the turbulence this place looks weird. Put that a bit closer. Yeah, a bit closer. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's cool. And yeah, and then you want to add a fade in, a fade out. So, grab the opacity hot a bit way in, and then change it to zero percent, and then it will fade in, and then grab another opacity keyframe, and then make that zero again to fade out. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, because of the song, it kind of builds up a bit more. So what I want to do is drag this. Um, or, uh, so I want to drag this um, optics com optics compensation a bit further away. So that's better. Okay, guys, so yeah, so uh, see you later. Sad. I don't think I love you no more. You never seem to call me later.